let me start by introducing our speaker for today, Dr. Suman Singh. Dr. Suman Singh works in the area of material science, where they explore variety of materials from the bulk form to nanoform. These materials vary from polymers, metal nanoparticles, carbon and carbon-like structures, including various types of 2D materials, um, graphene, reduced graphene oxide, maxines, and beans, uh, semiconductor quantum dots, etc. Main focus is on the ease of their synthesis with minimal chemical interventions and optimal uh, processing conditions, wherein green synthesis and electrochemistry become crucial. These materials are used as sensing probes, functionalization entity, catalysts, optical and electrochemical, thin films, and are often interfaced with microfluidics, 3D printing devices, paper devices, electrochemical disposables, screen printed electrodes, etc. The potential application of these materials is exploited for food and water quality, wastewater treatment, energy storage, and diagnostics. A professional ex excellence can be aspired from publications in high impact factor SCI journals, book chapters, and filed patents, along with best paper awards in many national and international conferences. As a supervisor, she has guided about 50 students for their undergraduate and postgraduate thesis work, and five students have already completed their PhD. Recent, uh, presently, she is working with three students who are pursuing their PhD. And Dr. Singh is also the faculty coordinator for the ACS International Student Chapter at CSIO Chandigarh. Thank you, Dr. Singh, for joining us. The stage is all yours. Good evening, audiences, and uh, thank you, Kunal, for introducing me to the audience. Yeah, uh, as we see today's uh, topic is fusion of advanced functional materials and 3D printing for sustainability. Uh, this topic was given uh, with the thought process that, okay, American Chemical Society deals with the chemistry most of the time, but no subject is complete unless we have some applied applications. And uh, for this, I think there must be the fusion for the applications as well as the materials and most of the materials are of uh, chemical in nature. So to start with, the, if I talk about, uh, uh, I would like to introduce uh, from where we come. Uh, I represent here Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and it is a long, long uh, old uh, institute, you can say. Uh, it was established in 1942 and we are an autonomous body at, in India. We have uh, 38 labs and their centers, outreach centers, some innovation complexes, and we are a system of uh, more than 4,000 active scientists and about 8,000 technical professionals. Uh, our labs are spread all over uh, India uh, uh, in every zone, north, east, south, west, and all the diagonals. So we are uh, very vibrant. All the labs have their specific defined domains uh, like leather, uh, food, uh, aroma. So likewise, different uh, uh, our labs, they have different uh, vision and mission covering most of the things which we require in our routine life. Uh, next, please. If we uh, just a uh, little brief uh, how our organization works, we are an autonomous body and as a society. We are prime minister is the president and vice president is the and uh, society members and minister of science and technologies are there. Then we have a governing body. Then we have advisory body, director general and performance appraisal boards like every institute uh, at every place. They are evaluated for their performance after every uh, 10 years. So performance appraisal boards do these things. Advisory board is always there to advise the laboratories where to work. To uh, help a particular lab run, there is a director, there is a management council who is concerned about the management aspects of this any laboratory and research council which looks after or which guides or mentors for the research related activities to that particular lab. Next please. So uh, CSIO, we are also very old. Uh, we are initially it was started in Delhi, but later on it is moved to Chandigarh. And uh, there are lots of uh, participants, international participants. And I would suggest whenever you get the chance to visit India, please make sure that Chandigarh also in is in your list because it's it's called a city beautiful. 
uh, mandate we have research design and development of scientific instruments as our name say, says central scientific instruments organization so main mandate is to have uh, scientific instruments which are useful for society as well as for industry we have a good human resource development center in the form of uh, phd mtex and uh, i uh, diploma courses and then we have scientific and technological services in terms of uh, testing calibrations etc next please So uh, this is my entire institute where, uh, as I told, there is a management council, director and research council. And if I talk about our uh, R&D structure, we have uh, five research groups, then we have two excellence centers, then s &T facilities, which help uh, all, the in all the groups to work for different aspects like thin film coating, mechanical design, electronic design and fab facility and then we have a support system in terms of project monitoring and information dissemination and business development next so if i say uh, this mssa is a short form for uh, material science and sensor applications group we are representing one of the groups at csio and as the name indicates material science and sensor applications so you can see that there are so many applications which uh, we are working uh, on different domains and being material scientist as you all know it is always a uh, multidisciplinary so that you can see here also uh, we work on uh, water quality food quality energy harvesting e-waste management biomedical diagnostic etc next please if i uh, talk about the research areas for myself in particular then i cover food quality already introduction dr kunal has already given so it's a just brief that we, i work on uh, food and water quality and diagnostics in the form of biosensing platforms and the energy and 3d printing next so now coming to the technical point or the technical discussion on this lecture series uh, we shall start with the topic that what is 3d printing because for american uh, for acs we belong our society belongs to chemistry and then there is a engineering technology which is called a 3d printing most commonly term it is additive manufacturing but uh, if we type in the google 3d printing is the most popular term so i have not added additive uh, manufacturing in the title rather i used 3d printing and uh, many organizations are now uh, using or different teams researchers etc they they use 3d printing and additive manufacturing interchangeably because they represent the same immediately we say additive manufacturing a picture of the 3d imaging comes so uh, these are interchangeable terms. Next, please. So what is 3D printing? It is a very small and uh, easy process if we talk in general, but of course it is not that much easy uh, as it name represents like 3D printing that's something you put and it will come uh, in a printed form. Uh, first is there must be a sum of product idea where in your mind you want to develop something and there is an imagine imaginary uh, picture in your mind. Then we uh, translate that uh, product idea into some CAD form using different softwares like SOLIDWORKS, etc. Then we process that model data. We slice different layers to understand what will be the parameters because all these things help in optimization of the parameters. Then we do final printing. There are different printers, of course. So then it's only a three-step process like CAD file formation, then 3D printing, and then when we get the final objects. Uh, next, please. Uh, generally, uh, we can say 3D printing techniques in the form of subtractive, attractive, additive and formative in subtractive you uh, remove layer by layer things and uh, conventionally we call them milling uh, uh, this thing uh, 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 breaking in using cnc machines so subtractive means subtracting something from the bulk to the smaller or to the product form whereas in additive the name indicates addition of layers is done and in formative there is some more like structures or more like techniques we use Next, please. So 3D printing uh, nowadays, uh, 
uh, while looking for this topic, I, I observed that uh, uh, initially I thought that this technique is uh, new to the researcher. It's because we are not into too much, the chemists people are not into too much of this 3D printing. But uh, during this uh, lecture preparation, I found that it is enormously used the, in almost all the era. That's why I added for the sustainability. Uh, no uh, field is left without the touch of 3D printing. If we can see this uh, flow chart, we have its application in building. Uh, you uh, uh, In India, Bangalore, recently one post office has been developed using 3D, uh, 3D printing. So uh, building, house making, robots, automotive, medical, uh, bioprinting of uh, organs, etc. None of this era is left untouched of this and in, uh, in the left side there is a percentage of uh, areas where this 3D printing is used and if we can see that for the industrial machines and for consumer products it is using a lot, it is being used a lot. So uh, that's how uh, we understand that 3D printing is involved in every sphere of our life. Next please. Uh, gen uh, there are uh, about uh, seven types of 3D printing, but broadly I have classified into stereolithography, selective powder bed fusion and fusion deposition modeling. And in the right side, if I say these are the techniques, uh, these are, there are more uh, techniques. I have mentioned only uh, four uh, techniques in this. And the right side, we can see that for medical uh, manufacturing processes, there are different types of uh, 3D printing techniques are being used in which uh, material extraction, powder bed fusion constitute the major part. Next, please. Then, uh, of course, uh, every every printer has different methodology, uh, different advantages and disadvantages. Uh, some somewhere hardness is required. Some somewhere we need viscosity. Somewhere we need uh, uh, wire into material, and somewhere we we require layer by uh, layer deposition or the formation. When every technique has some advantages and disadvantages, as we can see in these materials. All these are uh, these can be used for uh, different applications, and they have the re different requirements also in terms of uh, working mechanisms, materials which can be used for the printing, and of course applications. Next, please. Then, if I talk about three D printing materials, then commonly used are the conventional materials. Of course, to start with, where plastic, metal, ceramics, resins, graphite. These are the most common conventional materials. But with the advancement in the technologies and with the advancement in scientific tech, uh, scientific uh, uh, innovations, we have many uh, upcoming materials which are being used for this 3D printing. And uh, to name a few, these are some conductive inks, then uh, for uh, uh, this uh, living cells and tissues, advanced metals, where in the form of the composites they are being used, then polymers, nanomaterials, and food and edible material. These are some of the materials which have recently been explored in last uh, five years for this 3D printing uh, for different applications. Next, please. Uh, as I talked about the advanced functional materials, there are some conductive and functional link. Again, further, we need different binders for this to make them happen in the form of printing. And then, uh, as I talked, like living cells and tissues, these are being used in the bioplotting or the bioprinting, where we can, uh, uh, of course, uh, scientists are generating the uh, human organs also using these materi materials. Next, please. If uh, we see uh, medical manufacturing materials, this uh, uh, different types of materials are at present being used and uh, polymers constitute the major class of such materials which is being used for the medical applications. And uh, over a period of time, we could see the increase in publication also. So it uh, And if we see this graph from in 10 years, there is an enormous increase in the 3D printing and uh, using this 3D printing for different applications. So there is a uh, enormous rise in the interest as well as the attempt of researchers. Next, please. Then as uh, I included material, so material is very important in 3D printing, but there are some properties which we need to see for any material when we are planning to use it. Uh, first is printability. The material should be printable at least. It should be able to get some, uh, it should be able to get some form where this material can be printed. Then uh, for uh, load bearing 
activities or applications, we need mechanical properties also where the, uh, strength and durability plays a major role in deciding their efficiency. Then heat resistance, uh, they, they should be suitable uh, for high heat uh, treatments which are uh, being uh, generally done during the processing or this uh, during 3D printing or uh, for the heat resistance applications also the material should be having this uh, property. Then chemical resistance, of course, it's it's not that material should degrade during the printing also, uh, printing only or during post-processing, etc. So obviously, there's a, there must be some chemical stability. Electrical conductivity, again, this is the property uh, because some applications might require, like I will be discussing in uh, coming slides. And uh, post-processing, after every uh, 3D printing job, we need post-processing like centering, poly uh, fin finishing works are being done. So post-processing, uh, uh, the conditions should be bearable to the material. Then environmental Im impact, that is, of course, a major concern nowadays. So that uh, their material, most of the material which we are planning to use, they must be eco-friendly, recyclable, and biodegradable. And this is one of the factors which is responsible to move from the conventional materials to the advanced functional materials. Like as I mentioned in my one of the my previous in, in my previous slides, that. Uh, Food, uh, food related materials are being used to extract the material then plant uh, are uh, cell, uh, are used uh, to extract the fibers from this so uh, continuously our efforts should be towards the least environmental negative effects then biocompatibility again that is also an application uh, based in some medical applications most of uh, uh, medical applications we require biocompatibility because ultimately they are being used for the body next please uh, if I talk about uh, metallic materials, there are many materials which are being used for this 3D printing like titanium alloys, cobalt alloys, steel, tantalum, magnesium, nickel, titanium, etc. And these uh, I have uh, mentioned with, uh, with reference to the medical uh, applications like titanium is used for the dental and orthopedic implants. Then cobalt, chromium, this is used for the load bearing dental crowns. Uh, steel we use sometimes in the tooling and trauma plates. So likewise, these different materials are used for different applications uh, in terms of medical domain because they have the respective uh, properties required which are suitable for the medical applications. Next, please. So uh, these uh, few slides will be the examples like uh, left side we can see these are the titanium inserts for spacecraft as I said that none of the area is untouched with this 3D printing. Here we can see that uh, approximate 1500 grams was reduced by 500 grams using this 3D printing where this uh, hollow structures are possible to be designed. And uh, uh, most of you are aware of these seat belts earlier they used to be made uh, by steel. And uh, steel uh, has some weight now. Then, then uh, step uh, for reducing its weight uh, weight came the use of aluminium. But still, if we can uh, redesign our material or sorry, design of the material to make it as light as possible, like uh, you can see in the image, it is uh, lattice structures so which reduce this uh, overall weight. So likewise, depending upon the applications, we can uh, use different uh, printing. Next, please. So this is an example, uh, example where nanocellulose based materials are being used to print. These nanocellulose, as we know, this we can get from the uh, normal uh, plants, etc. Then we uh, extract uh, these fibers from them, and then we mix them with uh, some uh, fillers uh, to make to give them some shape. Uh, for example, in this nanocellulose, nanofibrils are used. Then the printing is done, and we can use this uh, uh, this nanocellulose based materials for biomedicine, electronics, food packaging, environmental sustainability, etc. Next, please. Yeah, this is uh, again uh, the same examples that bio-based polymer nanocomposites. As I said, that polymer is one of the biggest class of material which is being used for uh, 3D printing. And uh, 
the advantage of using this bio based polymer that they they create uh, less uh, uh, contamination less accumulation of waste so these are often preferred material for uh, having the negative environmental impact as i discussed previously next please then this is an example where we can use that nanocellulose as i mentioned earlier this is the example where this nanocellulose um, um, fibers or uh, materials this has been used for sensing the food uh, <clears throat> quality food quality for example in this we can see that it was used for uh, determining the freshness of uh, meat so uh, they here uh, this uh, bio inspired material uh, derived from the cellulose and uh, so, uh, sugar cane base this was made in the form of hydrogel and this uh, freshness was uh, was studied using the change in the color of this hydrogel similarly and this uh, on the right side this is uh, just an example where we we have uh, sorry where this uh, printing is done for food packaging applications and uh, you can see that uh, after printing and before printing there is the difference in the color so definitely this uh, treatment conditions they change some properties also next please this is another class where functional gels or the hydrogels i was talking about these gels are used in uh, different forms they can they are often used in the scaffolds or in preparing this inks and uh, they are very interesting material because they change the shape or the the way you want they can have the swelling they can have the swelling so lots of functionality they have uh, for example in the right side this is the a scaffold where it has been used to uh, develop the cells or to grow the cells and we could see that in the uh, this thing uh, in the 3d printed uh, structure there is a enormous growth of the cells so for biological applications for drug delivery for uh, cancer therapy such type of material are being used next please Uh, this is another example where uh, uh, this uh, graphene and based inks have been made and uh, uh, or through autoclave uh, uh, this synthesis has been done and the ink has been formulated using uh, uh, this ink formulations and uh, high viscosity and low viscosity inks were used to form this hydrogel and we could see this hydrogel we can get in the form of the free standing films also so a uh, free standing films can be used for uh, uh, for both the uh, uh, self standing or the self healing uh, applications as well as for the pack uh, so for drug delivering etc next please this is another example where uh, this hydrogel has been used for the multinodal sensory system and if we could see this hydrogel was uh, uh, printed uh, uh, abs uh, structure using a polymer this uh, filaments or the 3d printing mold was uh, developed and then this was uh, insulated with hydrogel and liquid metal composite to give it as a lattice structure uh, form so that surface area increases and this uh, hydrogel has the uh, self healing properties uh, after breaking it automatically reconnects so in the self healing uh, applications like bandages or uh, sensors these hydrogels can be used next please then this is an uh, nowadays very upcoming uh, applications where we can use this uh, printed uh, circuits uh, in the form of uh, clothing textiles also so these are uh, gel electrolytes are 3d printed uh, within this uh, textile matrices also where uh, you can have a, uh, you can monitor or you can design different layers also for because 3d printing is the technique which helps us in uh, developing the layer by layer structure so we can have multi material printing also where we can have the layers of different materials and these different uh, materials can be used to provide different uh, uh, properties to the material next please 
soft polymer materials uh, it is another class of material as i, I have been uh, telling uh, since the start of this month lecture that more than metallic this polymer materials have been explored for 3d printing because of their flexibility because of their printability because of their good uh, elastic and uh, uh, properties so these are being used and uh, uh, these polymers also help uh, also help or make it easy to combine different materials because it is easy to mix the material with the polymeric material rather than conventional metal material so here in this slide if we if uh, you can see that uh, this has shown the property of polymer materials uh, to mingle up with the other materials so that we can have a multi material available and multi uh, uh, 3D printing has been done for past few years, but now the next step is into 4D and 5D printing where this multi materials are being used. Multiple materials can be printed for to get a single product. Next, please. This uh, again, this is a this publication trend. I have shown a publication trend for this polymers only because the reason is again I said that these are more enormously used other than uh, any other material, and their requirement is as I mentioned because it helps us to get the meta material uh, sorry multiple materials for printing. It helps in the printing uh, ability of this material by uh, changing or by optimizing the viscosity. Then it uh, uh, these soft materials provide the mechanical reinforcements also for uh, different applications then they help in developing the porous structures also where we can create the porous by optimizing the designs uh, only the limitations that uh, um, sometimes these alone polymer cannot be used we need to have some fillers that can be used to make this polymer material more uh, printable uh, next please this is just an example where this polymers have been used for uh, this polymer has been used for soft robots uh, applications and like uh, uh, in news also and uh, some of you might have seen it practically also like in restaurants also now we are having waiters in the form of the robots and um, at, uh, for every household activities now we are getting into the use of robots so i think robots is one of the most uh, interesting entity which is able to mimic the human also so that's how uh, this uh, soft polymers find application in uh, this is an example where researchers have used this uh, soft polymers for developing the actuators for handling for elect uh, for movement actuation applications they have used which are uh, very crucial for any robot performance next please uh, this is biomedical engineering application of soft materials and the science uh, has no limits. So uh, this, this slide is an example where we can really say, say that science has no limits. Now with the help of science and with this advanced technologies, we are able to even uh, mimic our body, uh, mimic our vascular system, tissues. We can have the artificial limbs using 3D printing, etc. So uh, this is an example where this is final. If we see... A, this is the spinal cord scaffolds. If we uh, see this uh, F, uh, the here uh, artificial vascular system, heart is being developed. So these are some examples where it has reached to a uh, great advancement. 3D printing and material combination has reached to a great advancement where they are able to mimic the body. And uh, body is the biggest uh, most successful although but it's a big, uh, complex system so mimicking the body system is a great achievement in the science next please so nanotechnology uh, is another uh, area where uh, these materials are being used for 3d printing and these nanomaterials uh, find application in the form of uh, 3d uh, 3D printing for biomedical application, uh, the bioelectronic applications and electronic applications. And most of us are aware there are the different classes of nanomaterials ranging from metal nanoparticles, metal oxides, sulfides, 
uh, organic frameworks etc so these all materials are now can be uh, few years back means uh, 10 15 20 15 years back this nano materials was a new class of material for the researchers and now it has again uh, as i told like 3d printing it has also reached to almost all uh, spheres of our application so uh, in 3d printing also now nano materials are being used next please uh, this is an example where nanomaterials have been used for flexible and wearable electronic devices. And uh, for example, first one, this is the uh, 3D printed circuit, which has the flexibility also as can be seen from the uh, printed circuit. It can be folded, it, uh, it can be made flexible in either direction. So it is, uh, it is made by using reduced graphene oxide. So this is a good example where uh, these wearable electronic devices can be used both in the form of the uh, both in the form of the textiles uh, or uh, both in the hand uh, badges, watches, etc. Then if we see the second part here, uh, as I was mentioning that nanocellulose or uh, bio-inspired materials, the, here this uh, wood or the plants have been used to extract the material, of course, and they have synthesized uh, graphene from them and have used them for the temperature sensor. And again, flexible electronics is made possible with this 3D printed graphene. Now, if we see the C, this is the stress chain uh, sensors which we can uh, use again since these are wearable and flexible these can be used with the uh, uh, body uh, attaching with the body so uh, this is an example yes where this patch has been worn at the neck and uh, the stress and strain sensing has been done using this uh, uh, 3d printed uh, uh, sensors for this and uh, another example shows the wrist sensor which can be worn in the wrist so these are the examples of wearable uh, devices which has made the uh, made it um, possible to take your devices to any next level whether it is their electronics or the human body etc everywhere they can be used next please uh, this is another example where gold nanopart sorry silver nanoparticles have been used for antibacterial applications but they have been used in association with the scaffolds uh, for example uh, if i see as uh, we see a part in this uh, in the form of the layers the silver nanoparticles have been embedded in this 3d printed structure and uh, have studied this antibacterial and of course uh, silver is known for having its antibacterial activities but the moment you uh, associate or you make the composites definitely there must be some change whether positive or negative change in its antibacterial activity for the coatings it has been used for the because again for the coating antifoil coatings this uh, silver nanoparticles play a major role uh, responsive materials also for example c part it is uh, uh, temperature sensitive that with the change in temperature the silver nanoparticles embedded 3d uh, structure this can change the color for example in this figure we can see that at 37 degree it is blue in color but at 40 degree it has turned to red color so it is a thermo responsive material which can be used Next, please. Then this is an example where titanium nanotube scaffolds have been used for biomedical applications. Uh, generally for the uh, titanium printing, titanium printing is done, uh, but for any application, sometimes uh, titanium oxide layer gets formed. So if we develop this uh, uh, titanium uh, nanotubes on its surface, it reduces uh, this TiO2 formation and it is more uh, successful in demonstrating its required properties. Uh, next, please. This is a metal organic form mediated 3D printing. And uh, uh, in this, uh, I have included some examples because when I was looking for this lecture preparation, uh, it was like, uh, it's a broad sea, uh, sea which cannot be covered in uh, one hour lecture or 45 minutes lecture. So I have taken only the few examples to, uh, to just uh, share where 3D printing can take us and few examples what we are doing. So these are some of the examples we are discussing and we can explore for our researches also. So, uh, and in this particular case, this has been used for the bone repair. Of course, uh, medical uh, era or medical application has a huge potential 
for uh, advancements as well as for the possibility of uh, moving or uh, leading to any extreme of science. So this is a, a bone, if you are able to repair your bone, that is a bone for your life because once your bone is lost, you it's a great loss to human body. So attempt should be whether we can regenerate the bone or we can re repair the bone. So this 3D printing has made it possible that these bone repairs can also be done using some uh, 3D printed scaffolds. Here in this example, this uh, authors have used copper uh, based uh, metal organic framework in the form of the sheets and they have impregnated uh, this uh, bone structure and uh, studied the bone repair and if we see the B part this has multi applications where they have used it for the heterogeneous photocatalysis application as well as for the biomedical applications. So uh, <clears throat> uh, next please. Uh, this is again, if I talk about, I used word uh, sustainability. So sustainability, this energy, medical, all these uh, are one of the important parameters for sustainability. So energy is another area where uh, nowadays, now for past few years, uh, this uh, attention of the policymakers, government, as well as researchers is towards the energy. So there is again a race for the um, uh, scientific advancements and innovations in for the energy applications. And same happened with this uh, 3D printing of nanomaterials for energy applications. And on the left side, if we see that uh, these are uh, different materials like carbon, metal, polymer, ceramics, these materials are available which can be used for 3D printing. And of course, they are being used at present also. Many commercial applications has been done. Uh, what is the advantage of using this? Uh, for example, most of these devices, whether I talk about the supercapacitors, batteries or fuel cells, they need some uh, layer by layer assembled structure and you uh, where you need some ink, where you need fabrication techniques, then packing, electrolyte filling, there is always chance of leakage, etc. So, but with the 3D printing, we have reduced these steps like uh, directly this electrode and electrolyte can be uh, printed and at the same time it can be packed also. So, in a one go, you can, uh, anyone can get this uh, cell or the um, device fabricated. Next, please. Yeah, this is another wearable uh, electrochemical energy devices, uh, wearable and non-wearable. Here again, uh, graphene oxide has been studied a lot for such applications. Uh, of course, now magazine and other things are also coming, but magazine has been explored a lot for 3D printing also and without 3D printing also for these energy applications. For example, if we see A part A and B, here uh, this mm, uh, graphene oxide ink has been prepared to to print these structures for supercapacitor applications then for microcapacitors it has been used and for the batteries also this um, this has been used to fabricate the electrodes next please this is another example where uh, again this uh, graphene oxide composite where ferric oxide and uh, has been uh, used to, to develop this ink and these devices if we can see it is only hardly a one uh, one centimeter long device which can be used uh, uh, which can be fabricated using this 3d printing we can uh, this ink is formulated and then ink is uh, printed uh, in the form of the uh, devices but while working with the ink uh, we need to monitor many parameters like its viscosity, chemical stability. Uh, these are important parameters and it takes sometimes time also to optimize all these uh, parameters if you are starting with the new material. So itself, ink formulation itself is a big research domain which, which can be explored. Next, please. Now I will be uh, discussing some examples about 3D printing, what we are doing uh, using uh, at our institute for with respect to the 3D printing and its application. These are few uh, this uh, printers we have. We have printer for metal as well as for the polymer. And uh, for polymer, both the uh, fused diffusion as well as for the resin base and for the metal, we use conventionally titanium and copper, magnesium. These can be printed with this metal printer. Next, please. So this is an example where we have used this 3D printing for energy applications, as I mentioned in my previous 
slides that these are widely used for supercapacitor applications. So we also explored this uh, material where we have uh, uh, fabricated this 3D printed electrodes from the graphite spool and we studied its supercapacitor behavior and we could see that uh, discharge and charge response of this material is quite uh, quite good and we can see its it's uh, we can see the probability of its use in final device fabrication at present we have studied these electrodes uh, in the solution form only and now we are in the process of assembling it into a portable compact uh, handheld uh, supercapacitor device which is capable of lighting at least the leds so these are the experiments which are in progress and the motive behind again to minimize the uh, waste uh, waste like graphite graphite spool we have uh, in a small amount of material we can get a, a large number of uh, uh, electrodes printed uh, 3d printing also allows us uh, the control of morphology change of morphology depending upon our requirement and the performance analysis so these are the sheet like structures only the plain uh, sheet like structures which we printed and uh, and we have studied for its impedance and uh, for supercapacitor behavior and these are quite efficient. We are in the process of optimizing their designs also again. Next please. This is another uh, area as uh, Kunal said that uh, electrochemistry is uh, one of uh, my research areas where I love to work for the electrochemistry. So most of the three, this 3D printing we have used with respect to electrochemistry. And this is the work where uh, we have used this uh, plastic, uh, plastic waste to uh, functionalize our 3D printed graphite electrode. This, the previous one showed unfunctionalized uh, the previous slide showed unfunctionalized graphite electrodes where bare electrodes were used and in this case these were functionalized with the graphi uh, carbon activated carbon which we have derived from this uh, waste material so there uh, we wanted to think that energy uh, less energy consumption at the same time solution to this plastic waste and uh, with this uh, uh, carbon activated functionalized graphite electrodes we could uh, we studied their behavior in acidic, neutral, and basic medium, and our, our electrode shows best best results in the acidic medium. So, uh, to some extent, they are reflecting a battery-like behavior rather than supercapacitor. So, these are the initial uh, results which we obtained, and uh, now since. Uh, these electrodes should good behavior in the acidic medium. This will be taken towards the uh, battery designs. Next, please. This is a microbial fuel cell where we have used 3D printing to print titanium electrodes. As I told that uh, 3D printing allows uh, freedom with the morphology of electrodes and the previous graphite electrodes, they were solid electrodes are here to increase the surface area. We have um, done the lattice structures or mesh like structures in these electrodes to increase the surface area. And for the microbial fuel cell, this is the experimental set where I know in cathode, this was the single chamber setup which we used for our applications and uh, used uh, this titanium mesh, 3D printed titanium mesh electrode as an anode. And next please. This is the performance evaluation of our uh, electrodes and uh, first one is uh, with the different species, biological species, which can be used for the microbial fuel cell applications. And from here we could see that E. coli, um, e. Uh, e. coli was a better species which gave the relevant or the required uh, response. And then we compared the response with the titanium mesh electrode and the graphite electrode. Graphite electrode was normal and this mesh electrode was 3D printed from the titanium and it could see uh, it it showed enhanced performance as compared to the graphite electrode that's why after optimizing the species and then graphite ele material uh, sorry electrode material we we uh, since uh, we wanted our attempt was to increase this uh, current generation so again we functionalize these electrodes with the carbon dots and bimetallic uh, composites and we studied their response and uh, the combination of uh, biometallic nanoparticles, carbon dots, and titanium mesh electrode uh, resulted in better uh, response. Here, carbon dots were used as an electron mediator in the electrolyte, and cobalt, nickel, metal, uh, bimetallic nanoparticles were used to functionalize this titanium. So, this uh, 
has resulted in a great advancement in the current if we can see from uh, from approximately 0.23 uh, point uh, six five. Uh, there is an enhancement in the current, so result was very appreciable. And uh, we tested this uh, this thing with the wastewater also uh, to give it as final uh, application in the real samples. So we are working on it for the final assembling of a complete prototype for the microbial fuel cell. Next, please. Uh, this here uh, we use three D printing uh, for indirect. Uh, application. Uh, we uh, worked on graphitic carbon nitride and for graphitic carbon nitride people have reported hydrothermal, hydrothermal synthesis and pyrolysis synthesis method but they required huge amount of chemicals so we thought uh, uh, that we should try this electrochemical synthesis also and uh, only one paper we could see while uh, doing uh, our work that only one paper was available uh, and that was also not uh, full information was given. So we tried with uh, electrochemical synthesis of this graphitic carbon nitride where we used uh, that paper used this platinum electrode but since platinum adds cost and uh, uh, so we decided to replace this uh, platinum electrode with the this 3D printed uh, titanium electrode and the, we printed it in the circular form and then sliced in between to use the semicircle electrodes in this. We synthesized graphitic carbon nitride and we use this graphitite, graphitic carbon nitride for the water remediation. Next please. So this is an example where uh, this uh, uh, synthesized graphitic carbon nitride was used for the dye degradation. And from the figures or the colored uh, figures, we could see that this uh, synthesized graphitic carbon nitride was quite efficient in degrading this five uh, five dyes, uh, methylene blue, crystal violet, rose, bengal, rudamine. These, uh, these were the dyes which we chose because these are most frequently used. Next, please. Then uh, this is uh, we used for uh, uh, medical applications. We, we are using titanium, but here this was not for uh, medical application. We wanted to see whether this 3D printing is resulting in the change in the property of material also. Uh, Aparna, can you, uh, can you click on this uh, finger showing figure? This is a video on the extreme right. Yes. Yes, it's this one. Um... Focusing this is okay. not playing. It's not video. playing. Okay, fine. So here this titanium material is very hard. It is not flexible. But with optimization of our certain parameters, we could make it as a flexible. It was moving like a wire, a flexible wire. So this resulted in uh, uh, this property change of this titanium. So uh, this can uh, this can be used to explore further applications other than the medical applications. Next one. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, uh, we use this titanium for lattice hip implants. Uh, this, uh, if we see in the left left side, this uh, porosity of these uh, printed devices resemble the porosity of the cancellous bone. And here, uh, both uh, single porosity and variable porosity was tried uh, to develop this uh, hip implants. And this uh, these are real practical uh, implants which has been implanted in a patient. Uh, because if we if we, uh, we wanted to mimic the bone because uh, bone uh, the cells grow on the bones cancellous bone so we wanted to mimic the porosity of this this bone so that's why we tried with the different porosity and uh, this is quite successful with the patient next these are other some examples where we are using uh, 3D printing. Uh, of course, my other colleagues are uh, working on this. So we, here we are using this 3D printing for uh, cup and stamp uh, Im implants, which can be used for medical, which are being used for medical applications. Next. These are uh, custom uh, custom, or you can say patient specific implants. Sometimes they Conventional implants are available commercially, but sometimes uh, the specific requirements are, are not met by these conventional implants. So with patient-specific implants, uh, 
uh, you uh, we can print this uh, implant as per the requirement of uh, that part for example in this we can see that on the left side this hip cup was broken and nails are, are scattered here and there so uh, entire left area was uh, missing from this so it was a challenge because entire left portion was damaged and uh, it has to be rebuilt using this implant so this uh, implant has been 3d printed and it has also been implanted in the patients with the uh, in association with the nearby hospitals such in chandigarh so these are some successful stories where 3D printing is actually in action. Next, please. This is another uh, area where uh, we are working on uh, this 3D printing for biomedical application. For example, this slides shows for congen uh, congenital hemipheresis. Uh, this uh, 3D printed structures, plastic uh, from the polymers, this has been used to provide this flexibility because if we uh, we understand our hand, there are uh, 27 freedoms, uh, uh, degree of freedoms. And these, are, these devices are good for those who are not having that finger part, uh, half of the finger part missing due to some accident or from birth or from the non-functionality, etc. So uh, to make that uh, patient normal or to bear or to work for the routine applications, this uh, rehabilitation devices have been uh, printed and uh, these technologies are already transferred. Next, please. This is our recent work, which yesterday only we did. Uh, this uh, we printed copper. 3D printed copper and here uh, although heading said that for medical application but it is by mistake uh, here uh, because uh, this is this I am mentioning because uh, printing of copper is very difficult because it is refractive in nature and it is does not get the sufficient laser to melt it so this recently we have done and uh, we are trying to we will be developing uh, some water filtration uh, filters or uh, filter cartridges using this copper printing. Uh, it is uh, yesterday's work only. Next, please. So finally, we can conclude that uh, 3D printing has no ending. This uh, 3D printing is well associated with the advanced materials uh, in terms of energy and uh, other sustainable applications. Energy is one domain where major role is being played other than this uh, medical. Then customized and scalable designs with the 3D printing, there is any type of complexity is easy to be printed. So this helps to deal with all types of natural complexities, uh, etc. Then integration and miniaturization. Then again, as I told in my previous uh, uh, slides that we need the complete solution like printing to packing. So this provides an option option for the one st one stop uh, go with the device fabrications where this miniaturization as well as integration can be done uh, at the same time. Next, please. This is just a video to show how three D printing work. This is uh, this video is running. Yes. This these are the steps like generally which are followed. The CAD model was done and some material of your choice is chosen for 3D printing.
removing the parts and then uh, final post uh, processing cutting grinding smoothing Yeah, so th this is just uh, collaborations we are having national and international levels for our research domains. In the next slide, please. More information you can get about us on our website and uh, my personal social social media handles. Next, please. And this is my team who has uh, made me to present for you people. And uh, I always acknowledge acknowledge them because they are very good researchers uh, with my group. Thank you for all the attentions. Thank you.